Okay, we're going to just have a little, uh, a little chat about depression right now. Let's bring out the great Maria Bamford and Pat Oswald, everybody! This is the talk part of our evening. We thought that uh, since we were here together, uh, one nice way to end the night would be to talk about our experiences with depression uh, and uh, other issues and what uh, helped us get through. We could be informative as well as entertaining right now. Oh. Who wants information? <laughs> <laughs> you guys want information? So w where should we start, Gary? I guess I had a question for you. Sure. Which is, uh, what's it feel like to have such a positive moment? Well, it's uncomfortable, <laughs> I, mu I must say. And I w I can't wait till it's over <laughs> because of the, the relief. Yeah. Because I, I get so so anxious. I was talking with Maria earlier. We just can't wait till it's bedtime. There's snacks at home and yeah. then you <laughs> fall into a heap. Yeah. Everybody enjoy I like it when things are done. Yeah. <laughs> There's no more letting anybody down. But I, I, I can recognize now objectively that th this is a, a special night that I'll, that I'll never forget. I, I mean, these are two people I've admired since I first saw them perform and that they, they came to be a part of this. It's such an honor. Yeah. No, honestly. Thank you. Seeing you for the first time tonight, I've never seen you. I thought your stuff was amazing. <laughs> and uh, and Judd says he shot a th some footage of you that HBO's gonna show, and yes. that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, good, keep going, dude. Keep going up and doing this. Oh it's, it's, it feels like it's happening. <laughs> it is an a, a, a interesting part of uh, the mental state that when things are going well, it's very uncomfortable. Yes. That it's almost, there's a comfort in it going a little shitty. Right. Not total shitty. Right. But uh, a little shitty, because I'm, I'm editing a movie right now, and when I'm working, all I think the whole time is, I hope this doesn't lead to a terrible humiliation. Oh. And that's the fuel that gets me going every day. And then, at some point, if it all works out, I go, oh my god, I wasn't humiliated. <laughs> And then I start something else and start the process all over again. So you're saying that you're in a weird way. You're safe while you're doing it because it hasn't gotten out there yet. And there's a part of you that's like, can't I just stay in this zone where I'm always making a movie, but I don't have to actually put it out for anyone to look at. I just yeah, come here and eat craft service and film yes. things and then go home. This is a nice little life right now. Oh, wait, people, people want to watch this? Oh, no. Yes. Like, well, that's the escape weirdness. from the, the moment of judgment. Like, and then if the judgment is good, I don't uh, enjoy it that much, a little bit. But then I instantly go, but what will the next one be like? Right. And, uh, and I assume that well, even I in this moment, there's a little of that. Yeah, social media, I, I really can't, I can't do it uh, at all. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, yeah, I just can't I, read I'm, anything. I'm the opposite, and this is something I've been talking <laughs> to my therapist about in a very aggressive way. <laughs> I need to, <coughs> no, like, it's something that I need to really, I'm working with him on, and he's, if there's anything about me online, I will go. I will not stop reading the comments until I find the negative one and go, see, <laughs> there you go. And then, we, I'm, then I'm weirdly comforted. Wow. It's really weird. Like I will seek out the most negative thing about me. I don't know what it is. You know I, what I do at that moment? I go through that <coughs> person's tweets <laughs> and I will go back years and years <laughs> and there'll be something pleasant on it, right? Yeah. So they're like, Judd Apatow is shit. And then I will find something from three years ago, like a picture of them with their new puppy, and I'll just retweet it. <laughs> <laughs> I am watching you. I know wow. everything. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. But I, I am actively trying to stop. Like, it's almost like a, a mental exercise every morning to not, my, my wife's like, check Twitter in the morning, check Twitter in the evening and then actually do work because Twitter has been a real problem for me um, s because it's it's an endorphin. It's a little endorphin pill. Boom, yes. boom, 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 boom. Yes. Have you ever had a fear of losing your job because of a mental health issue? Because I think that's a, one thing that's been like terrifying to me is going, oh, I, 
I can't do my job anymore because of medication side effects or, or whatever it is. Uh, have you, I mean, obviously I know you spoke about that in your special. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and I got a job as a, a camp counselor, a day camp counselor two summers ago oh. because I needed to transition out of stand up to become a teacher. I would go back to school. I had the whole plan yeah, yeah. in my head because I couldn't do stand up yes. anymore. But I decided to go into this thing, teaching, which is much more stressful than Oh my God, it? teaching. That's really? like a mad, drunk crowd <laughs> for nine hours. Yes. That's terrible. Yes, yes. <laughs> They're trying to hug you. <laughs> oh. They're all Teach heckling. Oh, yeah. it's yes. constantly. Yes. Oh no, I tried teaching too. And I try, I, oh. I, um, I, when I got out of the hospital, I t tried doing reception work. I thought, well, maybe I could keep this together, you know, kind of, uh, but um, yeah, just to have something to do. Because show business can be very understanding about mental health, but at the same time, it can also be like, well, no, you can still produce, can't you? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, it's, you're good now, right? <laughs> I mean, I did, I did a show about mental health, and they, I had a hard time. I had to fight every day to get a 12-hour turnaround for s sleep time, and because uh, they said, I was like, no, I will, I will go mental. This whole, this whole show will happen in real time. <laughs> uh, it was so bizarre, you know. Anyway, yeah, it's really interesting to have to, you know, ask for things even when it was openly an issue. You know, I said, oh yeah, I, no, it's real. <laughs> like I'm not joking around. Well, uh, you, you said something that really made me sit up when you, during your um, set where you talked about you. Sp I spend all day um, getting way too emotionally um, angry about the pettiest shit. Oh yes. But yes. then that at night is what pays my bills for right. me oh, I know. and it reminded me there was a thing that Alan Moore who's an amazing writer said that comic, um, uh, comic book writer novel, yeah, yeah Watchmen yeah, yeah, from yeah, Hell yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and a great memoir he wrote and a gr amazing yes. yeah. yeah well he said something so fascinating where he said the um, the percentage of uh, um, um, mental health problems for writers is particularly high because part of their job part of the way that they put food on the table is they have to risk losing their identity in wow. order to get into the heads of the characters that they're writing about, like fiction writers. And it is a, it's a job risk. It's an on-job risk to do that over and over and over again. And I, it, it made me think that, in, in a way, comedians consciously, maybe not as deep as a novelist would, but on a day-to-day -day basis, they rewire themselves to overreact to things because that's where the laughs come from and yes. that's where the <laughs> success comes from. Yes. And you're constantly competing with those two things. Are you really that mad at Chipotle? <laughs> <laughs> I'm outraged at the people in, in front of me. Yeah. The well, corn thing is egregious. Well, here's yeah. the thing. <laughs> it's here's where I disagree. I feel like when you're at Chipotle, it's hard for them to know the angle of your finger. <laughs> And so, like, you're pointing to corn, but it could, from their angle, look like it's the lettuce. <laughs> but, but if you say corn, <laughs> they'll start scooping. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that part well, of it. Yeah. Part. But I have that problem, too, where I get angry if I'm in a line or I'm in traffic, and then I try to engage in empathy, but then that's a risk. Because empathy yes. can be the enemy. If you have empathy for absolutely everything, then your identity just disintegrates. You have to uh. find a healthy amount of the fuck is this guy throwing? You know, like, <laughs> you, it, you know, yes, you're supposed to go. Maybe they're having a horrible day. Maybe they just got really bad news. But you, yeah, but it, there comes a point where you're like, I need to get my fucking food. Like, I, I but <laughs> finding that line is really hard, man. I've, I've tried to do that with hecklers to like deal with it in sort of like a mindfulness meditation. Like, well, let's have some curiosity about how <laughs> we're trying to make America great again. Um, you know, like, but then, yeah, there's a certain point where it stops working, yeah. right? You yeah, gotta yeah. go shut the fuck up, like, or get out I, of the show. I had an interesting heckler while I was doing the Great Depression in Delaware. A man sitting right where you are, front and center. Interesting. And oh my he God, it's him! No. Ah! <laughs> this is a, this is a friendly face. This this man stood up, said, "What is this therapy?" And I said, "Well, it's called the Great Depression. I thought you would have." <laughs> And he said, you got nothing lighter? 
and I said, no, I've been workshopping this for nine yeah, months no. at this point. I, I, and I'm shooting a special in less than a month. I really need to hone this. And he said, you suck. And he walked out. But the, but the rest of the audience, they, they stayed. So that was good. But <laughs> now, Judd, what, Judd, what led you to do that? <laughs> That's weird that you would... Like he, no. he was Without pushing criticism. Me. You don't know what's called to producing. Fit. He's producing. Yeah. <laughs> I've, Someone's got to be real with you. <laughs> well, you have had Maria has had the, the you have the weirdest hecklers I've ever heard of and seen where they don't heckle you. They get angry at the rest of the crowd. I remember so vividly. We were at Irving Plaza on Comedians of Comedy. You came out. You were annihilating. And there's guy started yelling at the crowd because you could tell that he didn't understand, he didn't oh. get what you were doing. And he almost, in, in a weird way, not that I supported him yelling, but I'm like, I again, the empathy, like, I bet he maybe thinks, am I going insane? <laughs> <laughs> he was this big, dumb kind of jock guy, probably a pleasant guy, and everyone around him in Irving Plaza is losing their minds laughing, and he's like, I don't know what's, like, you could tell that he had a very different, and he started freaking out, like, what is going on? And they had to, like, push him out. Like, well, it's, it's pre-internet comedy, yeah. too, where people are so much less likely to go into something, you know, because it's so easy to Google. So, I mean, right, that's right, what's right. so surprising, where it's like, oh, man, it's on you. If you came in here uh, just coming in for some comedy, yeah. that's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Yeah. But I don't just go see music. Yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah, there's movies. There's, yeah, movies. Like read a, you read about it first, or you go, oh, I don't like reggae. Right. You know, like <laughs> maybe I won't go to the festival. But it was almost like that guy was the germ of the nervous breakdown we're all living through right now. Where I think that Trump, in a weird way, is a symptom. Not to make it political, but yeah, there's yeah. a group of people in this country who feels like they can't articulate it, but we're being left behind, culturally, demographically, and so they clung on to this weird, uh, again, it, it's almost like a Trump isn't a person, he's a tantrum. And, and from, and judging from, I mean, I'm only judging it from the, the kind of mental tantrums and breakdowns I've had about shit in the past. I weirdly know where these people are coming from in a very sick, fucked up way. <laughs> a friend of mine, I was having lunch with, a, you know, Dana Gould. Who, oh, of yeah, course, brilliant. And he was saying, he goes, even if Trump loses, do you realize this country is gonna go through four years of PTSD? This country, it's like the mom is gonna finally divorce the abusive alcoholic dad, wow. and we're all gonna suddenly become goth and start overeating, <laughs> and just like the whole country's gonna go nuts for a while. It's gonna be, it's gonna be just as ugly as when he was president, it's really. I mean, do you, do you see any of that? Like, w when you're looking at your, your mental, uh, whatever you're struggling with personally, and then do you sometimes see it out in, macro cosmic form in the world sometimes and it's yes i mean for most of my life i was forcing myself to be the aggressive guy and play contact sports and everything like that and i really just i, I just wanted to to collage <laughs> <laughs> like i'm i'm a i'm a i'm a staunch gun control guy i i for banning assault weapons and and but my glue gun from, from my cold, right. dead hand. I, <laughs> if Michael starts instituting a five-day waiting period to get a glue gun. But it seems like part of your struggle you talk about is that you don't feel the way you look. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm built like the Jewish Gaston, but inside. <laughs> I, I took the Disney Prince test, and I'm a bell. I'm a bell. I, I love to read, and mental illness runs in my family. My, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bell. I, well, and that's, I mean, that's one thing I loved about stand-up was that it's kind of like a macho thing, but with words. Right. So you can kind of take control of something, and then you're amplified, you're lit, and everybody's looking at I mean, I, I always felt like I was a very shy person who had a difficult time uh, speaking uh, extemporaneously or like jumping into conversations, of course not now, uh, <laughs> but fully medicated. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so stand up was this perfect, it's like, oh, I get to totally be myself and, and say exactly what I want to say, even if nobody wants me to. But we both read 
how to win friends and, and influence, influence people, people yeah, at yeah. a very young age. Yeah, my like dad. I took it out of the library at like second grade <laughs> and I just knew to say, hi Maria, nice to meet you Maria. <laughs> yes. Say the person's name oh. over and over again. You know, it's been <laughs> so great, Gary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I when I see you, Gary, and I love what you do, Gary. You know, I'm going to ask you three questions. Um, do you, do you like money? Uh, <laughs> you get somebody saying yes, 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 and then uh, then yeah. they'll be your friend. My dad sent me because I was depressed when I was a kid. So uh, yeah, and uh, then I learned to uh, win friends. <laughs> but in a way, that is the thing that made your whole life is you became interested in public speaking right. and the idea yes, of totally. confidence yeah, and yeah. so maybe everything he says is right. Mm -hmm. Dale Carnegie. Yeah, it's, Take it. right? it's helpful. Sure. Well, yes. the, the stuff that's helpful is helpful. Yeah. 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 What's the worst thing Dale <laughs> Carnegie said that's just wrong? <laughs> oh, I'm sure he was an awful person. It was the right. 1920s. It was, it, was it, was also, it was also manipulative and cynical. <laughs> that, yeah. I knew, yeah, I knew it was wrong, even if well, it did work. And I tried to do the things when I went to college on the East Coast, and people were like, why the fuck are you talking like that? <laughs> like, like no, everyone, nobody believed it. Midwest, people believed it. What was the main uh, direction of Dale Carnegie about how to speak? Uh, well, you, you only take an interest in the other person. You don't do a lot of speaking. You ask them, oh, so Judd, uh, what do you enjoy the, uh, the most, or what was the best thing about your day, Judd? I don't know, but I like you so much more right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it totally worked, even though I knew you were faking it. No, it's like, yeah, list, I mean, it's, it's genuine sk skills, but then when it's manipulative or it's the only way you c can communicate with other people <laughs> is through these structures, and I, th I think I, I still feel comfortable. I love structured communication. <laughs> I do. Who doesn't love a 12-step group? Oh, my God, three minutes. <laughs> Cut. Cut. That's a take. <laughs> On to the next. <laughs> uh, what has been the most helpful idea uh, in terms of just mental health? Like, what's what's the main things that you go back to on a day-to-day -to -day basis to, to keep uh, solid? Well, one thing, we, we talked about this today, was, was the idea that when I was very young, I was convinced that if I worked really hard in, in school or in basketball, I would do something great and then I would feel good about myself. And then we, we both read Springsteen's autobiography in which he talks about being depressed and I think, well, nobody worked harder and, and there are a few who were more successful and he was depressed and couldn't get out of bed and he was, and he was Springsteen and then he went on, <laughs> he went on antidepressants and he felt better so that it's, it's genetic and it's chemical and that should be on every commercial for antidepressants. Yeah. yeah. Springsteen's on them. Yeah. <laughs> it's more effective than being Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If I were Jeffrey Ross, I'd yeah. bump your mic right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's trademark. Yeah, yeah. That's trademark. Yeah. Side effects may include being Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I read that autobiography too, and it really felt to me like, you know, because he always did these epic four hour shows. Yes. And it really became clear when you read about it that he was just avoiding having to be by himself. That's he did not yes. want to be alone yes. with his own thoughts. So if I'm in uh. a, st the, the roar of a stadium became his white noise machine. Wow. Um, and then when he wasn't touring or doing an album, he would. Did, wouldn't he like obsessively drive across country alone, be awake for days, and then just park outside of his old house and just yes. stare at it? Like oh my clearly gosh. going through really dark, weird stuff. So yeah, yeah it, it was a yeah. What made him a great rock star was him avoiding ever having to face himself, in, in a weird way. Whew. You know, and it, that but that gets back to that risk we were talking about of. Sometimes to be a great writer, to be a great comedian, to be a great artist, you sacrifice and you roll the dice over and over again with your mental health. Well, right. you and know? do you guys think has your, has your work, I mean, because I worry about this all the time, that my work has suffered from uh, me not being able to be as productive as I thought I once was? I don't know, I was, I was manic, so it's hard to say uh, whether, whether I was truly being productive or if I was just calling the Pope a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <Holy shit>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a common 
common one <laughs> calling the Pope. I, I literally flashed to you like that was the beginning of like a Zoloft commercial you were doing. Like, I didn't know if I was being productive or just calling the Pope a lot, but you know what? Once I got on Zoloft, like, wait, wait, why the fuck would she call him the, like, just a throwaway line in a, in a drug ad? <laughs> You know those manic depressions, like the ones and for you're bipolar. Like you're, you're taking cookies out of the oven while you're talking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> those bipolar ads, like she's always so down. It's like, why don't they catch the manic times? You know where she's oh, like having, having with her the head time in her, of her hands. Life. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh my god, she's sexting. She's <laughs> like, <laughs> she's not always making pots. There's that one commercial where they have all the photos around the house of the woman, and in every photo, like, on the piano, it, she's just like. <laughs> 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 uh, but but ha has, have you ha felt like, oh, now I, I do less? As a, like, have you felt that at all? Like, well, it, I, I the beat myself up for so long because I, I felt that I had, I had wasted my potential and mm -hmm. my, my the g gifts because I was sleeping so much and unable to face my life and and for two and a half years i wrote five minutes oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and i i sleep a lot due to uh yeah seroquel but uh yeah. i i still i feel that like oh I, I wish i could do do more but then i tried to tell myself uh when i did do more it was just uh getting more amped up you know i right. tried to kill myself so it's like oh yeah. well anyway. <laughs> Maybe I'll just get a few less things done. <laughs> well, you know, I, I th the last conversation, the last uh, session I had with my therapist, this guy's amazing, and he was like, we're going to start working on you having, because I'm realizing I overschedule stuff because I, it, it makes me feel like I'm wanted. Right. Oh, I gotta go do this podcast. I'm gonna go to this TV show. I'm gonna go in this meeting. I'm gonna go pitch. I, I, I'll do, take meetings on things that I know I don't wanna write. I know I don't wanna actually put my energy, but I just want to know that someone is waiting mm to see me sometimes and then it'll then it'll catch up to me yeah. like yesterday i had just gotten off of you know traveling and and doing the special and then going back to my um there was just like constant travel and hassle back and forth and then yesterday i took my daughter to school and i came home at eight o'clock and i slept till like four o'clock my it's almost like my body took over something else went you're gonna go lie down right now like lie the hell down so I still have problems with that. I still have, I, I don't even know if it's, it's not manic depression because I don't really have the depression anymore. It's like manic and then shut down for a day and then get back. And when you're doing nine different things at once, you never really complete anything. You're just always busy. And b it, there's that fear of like, what, getting back to you. If, what if I commit to one thing and then it sucks? But if I'm committed to nine different things and I, I can't get these things done, but I'm trying my best, then I'm safe. I'm fucking safe. You know, but then you realize you just committed to do the sequel to Pluto Nash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It would not well, be surprised if I said yes, said yes in that meeting. That. Yeah. Yeah. And show business itself is kind of like a, an alcoholic, like calling, you know, like it's just sort of like, I love you. You're the best. <laughs> and you're just like, Go to hell. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Do you God. feel ultimately that your show business career has been this? positive for us or do you think it just oh. taps into the negative no stuff? no 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 it's been very i mean it's been it, i mean i think like all life it's been very positive and then also has some n negative point. but i think stand-up especially is a great thing for somebody for yes. with mental health issues because yes. the comedians super sensitive i mean some of the biggest uh petunias uh <laughs> on the planet uh, and yeah, and talk about everything openly, and uh, yeah, it's and the hours you cannot beat the hours. Yes. Yes. You mean the hour? The hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. It really is. Are there things that you guys do like every day to like stabilize? Like I know, like if I exercise, yes. the day is different. If I meditate, the day is different. Like what? Yes. Are, what, what are your routines? I have like twenty of them, but. One of the things is to is to exercise every day, and then the other thing you were talking about overscheduling yourself. I was not seeing anybody for weeks at a time, so I started accepting any invitation to go anywhere, yep. or do anything, including just people from the audience after a show that I meet. They say, "Hey, do you want to have lunch with us?" Yes, yes. <laughs> it will get me out of the hotel, which is the most depressing 
place. It's dark, it's lonely, I and, and it's uncomfortable, yeah. I do that with people off Twitter, which is I, yes. I ask, because I, I can't get myself I can't get myself to rehearse anymore because I already know what's at the end of the rainbow. You're, uh, trying, to, you're, you're just trying to get on an episode of Dateline. No. <laughs> I mean, my God, what the fuck no. are you thinking? No, they're, they're <laughs> lovely. Okay. I, I, I think at least 50 people and met them for coffee or for lunch yes. and just get together and what because I have to rehearse for shows because I'm very theatrical, so I'll rehearse for an hour, I'll buy them lunch, oh, and then we'll fantastic. get to chit chat. Usually, they have a mental health issue. High fives all around, yes. and uh, yes. it's it's perfect. Yeah, the hotels by yourself. Um, although it's a quality problem uh, to be in a, a lovely Hampton Inn. <laughs> uh, but you're running your act for strangers that you entice on Twitter. Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I check their feed. Uh, uh, but and I've had only positive, only very positive, lovely people who are just as shy as I am and are kind of, you know, just uh, uh, have a, are self employed, so have the time. And uh, yeah. So is this like at a restaurant? Where are you when you're running Anywhere. the full uh, It's act? always close. I'm very much about geography. I got to make and it, it it's very a easy for place, right? Oh, God. Yes. Okay. Right. Oh, my God. Please. No, 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 no. Yeah, and I don't tell anybody else where we're we're going. So my, I tell my husband who's here tonight. He's he's been a witness to some of them. He's like <laughs> he's like, uh, it's, they seem okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, everyone's usually pretty lovely. It's a, it, that is the beautiful thing about the internet is the majority of it is pleasant, a uh, perfectly lovely people. Wow. Yes, yes, perfectly uh, lovely. But they must be just in awe and so excited because they're fans. Oh no. I think people see and it's a lot. Free. Yeah, it's free, yeah. and that's my favorite thing is to uh, provide yeah. something free, because uh, I love free things. Um, yeah. Leno free used clinics, to do it, but he, he charged. Free. Yeah. Oh, no. Leno, that guy. Well, that's why. <laughs> that's where he got. Where How he else is. are you gonna not touch your Tonight Show money? <laughs> uh, I mean, we were talking about how when you do stand up or certain types of writing, what I like about it is that. Uh, the worst thing that ever happens, you're so happy that it happened. I, I threw the first ball out at a Mets game, and I was like, well, if it goes great, I'm going to feel great, and if it's a total humiliation, I'll get four minutes out of it. Yeah. And I feel like if your whole life you're running through that filter, right. in, in a weird way, you're excited for all the bad stuff. Yeah. Right. Well, there's vengeance and redemption from yeah. from these things. Yeah. So that that's a positive thing with with comedy. Well, there's also connection a after a while it's really hard. You, you, I I've always said you can tell when a comedian is young because his or her act is all about let me tell you about this other stupid thing <laughs> and this other thing where I got the better of this idiot. And then as they get older, your act becomes Listen to this stupid fucking <laughs> thing. You know, and because you, you get humility and, and confidence and wisdom yes. to go, oh, that's a way better way to connect with audiences rather than go out and go, let me tell you guys how it is. Like, wow. you know, like, and, but that's the insecurity of being young. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about the worst therapist you've ever had. <laughs> I, I see two right now. Uh, I have a, a, a kind of a mindfulness Buddha type guy, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, this isn't at the same time. It's not like a Thunderdome kind of thing? No, no. Like, okay. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Both of you, go. All right. Never got love from my dad. Let's yeah. go at it, guys. Come on. <laughs> on the weekend, I have more of a kind of a power Hollywood guy. Like, at the end of the session, like, his phone rings. Like, he's going to do a session on the phone. And it's always like, uh, instead of it ringing, his ring is it says the name of the next person. So it's like in the middle of the session, you just hear like, Sylvester Stallone, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester. <laughs> not that it was that. I f created a fake name. Um, There's privacy laws. He's not in therapy, clearly. No. Um, but, uh, and then uh, this therapist just talks uh, for 57 minutes straight. Wow. He talks to you. Like I say one thing and then he like talks for 57. He talks the entire time. What I think he's that? hypnotizing me. It's like a dad. Yeah. I had a therapist once that made me lay on a table and he touched me a little bit. <laughs> like there was a lot of breathing and, and, energy. and yeah. energy work, uh, breath work. You guys done breath work? But who, who, who was your worst therapist that was not helpful? I've never, <clears throat> I've never had a bad therapist, but I did have a therapist that really, it, it, it was, I, he was actually really good and he combined both Eastern and Western medicine. So there was some meditation and there was, you know, like, um, uh, acupuncture and stuff like that. 
And then he fucking moved to Pacific Palisades, and I was living in Los Feliz, <laughs> and I had to, and I went to see him a couple times, but it was three and a half hours out of my day to go see him. And then I, I got to the point where I was like, my biggest problem in my life is driving out to see you. Like, <laughs> if I could find someone close to me, that would solve a lot of my stress. <laughs> and to his credit, he was like, I totally see what you're saying. And, and he helped me find someone closer. And now I have the, the therapist that I see now, I don't see him because he also moved way to west. And we just do phone sessions and it's fucking great because I, there's a, there's a room in my house that can get, it's very, very dark. And I just lie there and I almost feel like I'm totally disconnected from this. And it's just my mind and emotions dealing with him and he's fucking great. So why don't you switch back to the first guy? First guy, there was more um, uh, audio visual aids that he would use and the acupuncture, like, like it was more of a, there was, it wasn't just talk therapy. And another reason that um, I stuck with this second guy is because uh, he said one of the smartest things I've ever heard. Um, he didn't even say it to me. My, my first wife, when we, we had our child, she went through the worst postpartum I've ever seen and he's well he said two great things to her one he said I if, if I was like the president of medicine or whatever and could could you know dictate things um, the phrase if you experience postpartum I would get rid of the if everyone experiences it and using that if makes women like it took my wife a long time to go seek help because she she felt I'm weak I'm less than you know Whereas she should have gone, everyone does this, let's deal with it. And then he started her on an antidepressant and um, she went back the next week and she's like, look, I know this stuff doesn't work for like six weeks, but I'm already feeling better because I'm taking it and I feel weird. I know that this, uh, this is like a placebo effect. So, you know, I'm f and then he goes, do you want my honest opinion? He's like, yeah, he goes, who gives a shit? <laughs> it's, it works. Why are you questioning it working? Let it work, like be happy. So that attitude I loved and I was like I want to go talk to him and he's been amazing so you had you had visual aids the other one I had a guy once who gave me a, a doll of a, I had a, a guy a that gave me a child. doll yeah the, and, the and, inner child thing yeah and I had to talk oh. to the doll the doll's name was like little buddy <laughs> and he was like talk to little buddy and suddenly I'm like doing a ventriloquism routine and, <laughs> and it, it, it's, you get very self-conscious yeah. when you're suddenly working the puppet come on little buddy I just want to have a nice time here and work on my pro fuck you ass Oh, oh, now, buddy, come on. I'm trying to work through some trauma. I'm trying to work through some boredom. Oh, buddy, no. Like, what if you really started killing with the act? Like, he really got into the character too much. It's pretty messed up. We just want to have a nice session with a nice doctor. Fuck him. Oh, I'm sorry. He's... <laughs> but Gary ta he talks about the experience of being uh, in, a, in a, what would you call it? A facility? Yes, uh, yes, a psych very, ward. I always called it the psych ward. As yeah. a very positive thing that helped you. Yes. And how did you feel about uh, it, ultimately? Yeah, I think totally, it's just a normal hospital. Uh, you know, I, I felt horrible, so it wasn't, but it was just a normal hospital. Uh, I gotta say there isn't as much funding for mental health, so it's as if a uh, Hollywood uh, set director came in and said, Okay, let's stack the New Yorkers all tipping this way, <laughs> but they've got to be 20 years old. The puzzle, let's take out nine of the pieces. Yes! Let it be all sky. All sky. <laughs> um, and then yes. let's put the TV on uh, highest volume, uh, le lose the remote. <laughs> like it's just, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just like a setup to have a bummer. Because like, yeah. you go to the breast cancer ward and it's like, oh my! <laughs> I'm sure it's not like that, but I've, I've been to it. Yeah, anyways. It's, it's less shaming. It feels less right. shaming. Right. That, that was one of my favorite jokes you did was about the people at work who you say you have depression, and they say, we're all depressed, but you made it. Yeah, we all have cancer. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, would yeah, never yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. You don't think I have cancer every morning? <laughs> Oh, did that ever make me feel empowered? Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that's the problem. You don't get as much respect for being yeah. depressed because it has the, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a short-sighted language where the word for 
not wanting to live anymore is the same as, well, the Mets lost or the, the yeah. yeah, you f- yeah. feel like the same w- way. William Styron type depression, you know, yes. like darkness yes. visible. And then yes. there's like, mm, yes. I just don't feel good today. <laughs> <laughs> My yes. pants are kind of weird. <laughs> the relationship like with uh, people who come to see you uh, when you talk about these issues? Wh- what is that experience like and what do you think people get from you talking about difficult issues on stage? I, I think the people are, are so <sighs> relieved, I think, that somebody else is experiencing this and that they're not alone and, and the conversations I have in the meet and greet since I started talking about this uh, have been so deep and, and but but uh, I don't know, maybe I'll get tired of it, but it, it still makes me feel so good that, that people are connecting with me in, on a level that they weren't connecting on with my abbreviating the states, which was, which was <laughs> terrific, but <laughs> it's just, it's not the same as opening up about electroconvulsive therapy and, and... What do you want them to take from it? I want them to take hope that, that because two and a half years ago, I guess it was October of 2017 that I started to feel better but prior to that I, I I was frequently googling painless suicides and Siri always tells you what yeah, phone number to <coughs> right here. yeah Wait, well, didn't know Siri. yeah Siri is, is so thoughtful <laughs> it will tell you the suicide prevention hotline instead of giving you these painless suicides and and there really aren't any by the way <laughs> and 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 now I can't wait to do more shows and and I just I'm, I'm so Grateful I stuck around for this. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you so much. You. October 5th, yeah. The Great Depress, Gary Goldman, Maria Bamford, Pat Algol, Andy Frasco of the UN. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. Thank you.